My name is Abang Messi Asu. I am a presenter with the Green Deal Nigeria team. My name is Omojua, Jafet Omojua. I'm one of the presenters of the Green Deal Nigeria. Azina Mohammed, one of the presenters in Green Deal Nigeria. I have told you that yes, we have oil. I have also told you that our oil is being threatened, not just by the fact that it will finish, but by the fact that those that are buying our oil are looking to keep things in their home. To the one with the saloon, the barber, everybody needs electricity. Imagine if all of them had solar panels mounted. Problem solved. And you get to help the environment in the same way. I know this is overly optimistic about Hadiza. But you must imagine something positive before it happens. I think in one word, Green Deal Nigeria is iconoclastic. Iconoclastic in the sense that this has never been done before. The issues of raising have never been raised before. I mean, who came out to say Nigeria's oil will finish? I'm Christine Kay. I'm the director of the Heinrich Böll Foundation's Nigeria and West Africa office. Today we live in an age of global warming and climate change, a reality that most Nigerians actually experience on a daily basis. But the concept of global warming hasn't really sunk into policy making, into individual people's life choices, etc. So we set out to do a Green Deal Nigeria study. We had three authors from Nigeria, and we had one international author, Hans Verolme. The Green Deal Nigeria study isn't a study, it's a vision. It's a project to inspire people to take control of life and to make the change that they want to see. I met with Christine and we were talking about the challenge that we face between having our ideals as environmentalists and the, the big gap with government policy. And it was my contention that we could actually devise a process by which these ideas could be promoted and integrated into government thinking, even in a tough environment like Nigeria. The, the Green Deal had uh, four different chapters, principally with a lead consultant who coordinated uh, all of the four chapters. One of the chapters dealing on Nigerian oil and gas, the other chapter dealing on uh, agriculture, one of the chapters dealing on access to energy, and then one on climate change and conflict. The last two are the ones I'm directly involved with. We made sure that this wasn't an academic exercise. We worked with civil society leaders, with academic experts, we worked with activists, and we worked with those people in government that themselves are fed up. The first thing is that the learning curve about climate change is still very deep, you know, all around Nigeria. So climate change is new here, and people still think it's very abstract. It's something that doesn't merit priority in terms of legislative uh, business. Because for us to pass any legislation or to draw any policy, people whom we need, our colleagues and whom we need to be able to do that, we have to understand what it is. And uh, they think it's not something that is in the immediate benefit of their, uh, of their constituents. And that could be an ignorant assessment. What I'm trying to say is that overall in our society, people don't understand what climate change is, including the parliamentarians. So there's been little or nothing we've been able to do to be able to overcome that and be able to translate into legislation. I do not think that as of today we have an update of a vulnerability assessment of what climate change can do to our national economy or to the country as a whole. So first of all, government must really do an assessment to know to what extent that climate change is going to affect us. If government identifies a problem, government should set up the framework to address those problems. And thirdly, government must redirect investment to properly address those things in the context of the assessment. Those are what government needs to do. And currently, I do not think government is doing it properly. We came up with um, a legislation on the institutional framework to address climate change by saying that Nigeria should have a um, Nigerian Climate Change Commission. You know, the law was passed here in the two chambers and then sent to the president for assent and then he refused to sign. I mean, in the face of all the problems that we have, so what are you going to do? We have to go back to work, you know, back to the table to be able to continue to persuade, to intervene, to help people put pressure. 
At the beginning of the process of the thinking, how should we do a Green Deal Nigeria project, we thought it is really hard to engage policymakers, especially at federal level. So we thought, let's take a, a road show, a road trip, and engage citizens. We would now come back to Abuja, so to speak, having toured Lagos, the east, the, the north, etc. Come back to Abuja and then engage federal politicians and say, you see, people want this. We have collected their views. So what we need is like, in, in very ambitious terms, is a national dialogue. How do we now put together a big presentation that would engage uh, a non-expert audience and um, not overwhelm them. And I must say the, the three presenters, Azina Mohammed and Mercy Abang and Jafeth Omojua, who are all known to us through their participation in the Occupy movement at the beginning of 2012, they were fired up. We found them on Twitter. Azina Mohammed, Jafeth Omojua, Mercy Abang are all big names on Twitter. Politically motivated Twitter people. So with these three young people, our presenters, we were looking what are we standing for? What do we want to propose? Um, I guess we were always just thinking about the fact that um, the extractive industry was not the way forward. It wasn't the future for Nigeria. But we never thought that there was a future in that there was a future in green movement or a green economy until I got in introduced to Heinrich Ball Foundation and then I started seeing that there actually was an alternative. So that was how we got involved with Green Deal Nigeria and the Green Movement. So in the translation from the expert study, which focuses a lot on policy and macro level and the, the trends, you know, global and in Nigeria, we now translated that to, let's say, the local and the community level. How much does it cost? to rig up a 150 kilowatt uh, small hydro scheme. We had an intern here, Zuira Asekome. So she was the one researching all of the figures. She did the calculations. So we had another intern. Uh, her name is Zumunta Machunga Disu. She already wrote, co-wrote the oil and gas chapter on the Green Deal Nigeria study. And she was researching into the international aspects. The objective of the reigning camp was basically to get the things we needed to get out there, to understand them. You don't go to the world when you're not, when you lack content. And we also had to have uh, not just photos, but multimedia presentations. We had to go to uh, the different issues, especially with different issues with respect to climate change within Nigeria. We had to get real life uh, multimedia presentations, videos, still uh, still photographs and also um, animations. I was a part of uh, the, the filming trip that went to the eastern part of Nigeria. I went to the, the place Nanka in Anambra state and I was in total shock. I had heard of it, of, yes, there's an erosion problem and you see, but I had not seen it first time. And so first time for me, it was like, wow. And finally, towards the end of 2012, we were ready um, and we went out with our first presentation after a few rehearsals that we had in the office with kind of a trial audience who said, oh, it's too long, oh, you need more illustrations. Um, a call to action at the end, it was a lot of information overload. So what exactly are you calling the people in the audience who will be seeing this presentation? What, what are you calling them to do? A little difficult to follow. Um, I wondered also through the presentation that who is this for and what's the purpose? Are we, or are we the ones to convey this message to the government or something? So far we've had four presentations. We had the intro presentation where we had, we had lots of farmers and the religious community in attendance. We also had the other event where was the major event where we brought the mixed public. We had the young people there, we had the, the old and all of that. and. We also went to London, where we had another presentation for the Nigerian community in London. I went to Berlin in Germany, where we also had another presentation. That was in, that's four presentations for the year 2012. Now the presentation was such that we had three sets of presentation. I, I was focusing on the oil and gas aspect. Messi was focusing on the agricultural aspect. Azina was focusing on the um, renewable energy and climate issues. 
the presentations we've had, I'm the icebreaker. I go, I basically talk about problems, which I didn't really essentially like speaking about. I analyze problems and fortunately I also say the things we could do right. And then Azina comes and speaks about how much we could also look into oil, um, into um, renewable energy, getting energy from sources that Nigeria as a, Nigerians as a people are not used to. Then Messi comes to talk about how much you could make from being, um, from investing in agriculture. We do those three presentations and we take our seats, take questions from the audience and it's also essential to state that when the questions come, they actually go beyond our presentations. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Akasim uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record this evening. If we don't check... Uh, I saw there were several presentations and um, there were also several videos which made it more, more educated. But we're able to see all those on the videos. And you know, there were question and answer segment and they give us the opportunity to be able to interrogate them on what they saw in the field. What I liked about the presentation was um the talk on uh, petroleum. In Nigeria, we generally have this idea that our petrol will never run out. And so this seems to be like the only um, form of um, income in our country. So we use, 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 and we don't think of other sources of um, energy that we could use. I look on to myself that, ah, must I wait and look for government jobs? No, from these little things I've gathered, I think if I can start by making use, starting from agriculture. The event was quite nice and uh, I hope that the organization can go around the country to educate people, especially more at the grassroots. At the Green Deal Nigeria um, event on the 21st and 31st of October, Creed's Energy was there as an exhibitor. At the beginning, it was more of, um, you know, waiting to see what this would be about. Uh, a lot of people came in and they did go past the uh, exhibition tables, but they were not uh, too keen on looking at what was there and what was on display. Uh, a lot of them came back after the presentation to look at what was available and to ask questions. Uh, we also had a few people come to our offices to inquire more about what solutions we could offer for their specific businesses. During the first or second presentation in Abuja, it was the National Planning Commission who invited our Green Deal Nigeria presenters to be part of a review towards the implementation of the national vision, which they call Vision 2020. We've also been invited to the National Assembly to present there, because the, in inverted commas, the Poor Climate Change Committee in the National Assembly uh, continues to be called, oh, you the rainmakers. I think when we now go out in the next phase uh, to, to the audiences outside Abuja. Green Deal Nigeria is going on a roadshow throughout Nigeria, various regions and various audiences from market women, students, local politicians to business people, etc. Um, and the presenters are using all the video and other materials to entertain and inform these audiences. And in between the events, the, the presenters who are also in themselves big blogger and Twitter names in Nigeria will maintain campaigns on the social media, raising issue by issue over a longer period of time. Like if we go to the east of the country, we would have similar uh, mix of audiences, um, but with more even levels of knowledge. And then we will want to work with the local NGOs and local groups who are interested in development. They can go on talking about this Green Deal Nigeria messages. So we want to leave a CD and a study and our video clips and all of those materials behind for them to be able to discuss these options, take action, as I said, lo lobby the local government or the state assemblies or whatever it is, and start monitoring and tracking budget. But nothing will happen until we can see the, the direct effect on the livelihood of the people, until we can see that people have better um, light hours, power hours in their houses from just depend, being dependent on NEPA to having their, able to power their own generator with solar or wind. Until these things become the norm rather than the exception, then our work would not have been done and I think we can do it.